Hi, Keith, Caleb, and Steve here at Rock Island Auctions, and we're here with some more cool guns again, and we have got a really, really super cool gun that I don't know a whole lot about, but this is a amazing piece. It's a Gardner gun, 45.7. A Gardner repeating gun, the closest thing to a machine gun you can get without having a Gatling mm -hmm. arrangement or something like that. Yeah, rotating barrels like the Gatling gun. This yeah. was, the barrels are laid, as we can see right here, side by side. Side by side, you have two bolts side by side and they go bang, 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 just like that. As fast as you can pull the crank. Yep, dual feed, stick magazine coming out the top. You just basically fed the rounds in right through the clip here and it, they dropped in. And right. as it alternated, it fired. Mm -hmm. Right, your 4570 rounds would be secured by the rim here and they'd be hanging out in the open. The bullets would be right there, and down they go. Yeah, and when I first walked up to it, I was like, oh, it looks like it's chambered in something small. <laughs> no, it just looks yeah. small compared to yeah. this massive gun. Yeah, bottom eject mechanism too. So they come in the top and they go out the bottom. So let's, let's crack it open. So we'll take... I'll take that from you. All right. All right, we then uncrank the... Oh. Easy does it. A lot of brass in this thing, like enough to make a church bell out of. Yeah, solid brass other than the internals in the barrels. And right. It looks like there's steel enough, actual steel in it to make a whole other firearm. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a camshaft here, and away you go. Very cool. Listen to that clockwork. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, this would be set on just eject only. Instead. Right. And that's how you unloaded the gun, because the safety deactivates the cocking mechanism, so you can just run the rounds through if you want to unload it in a hurry. Roll it around over here. Right now it's sitting on eject or safe only. Roll it up to right here, and we're in firing position where the firing pins or strikers would hit. Right, and as they go, they cock in when they catch, when the bolt goes forward, they release when the bolt goes closed. Open it up, there's a man, There's a automatic ejector that comes in and pushes down on the round to make sure it positively ejects out of the gun. Mm -hmm. Then you can see it's going back and forth. And it's just as smooth as glass. Yeah. Really smooth. Now, after a couple hundred rounds of black powder 4570, maybe it won't be a little, yeah. it's gonna be a little gummy. Yeah. But. <laughs> But, There's enough clearance in there to where you can get in there and hose it out oh, if you yeah. need to. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the machining that went into this at the time. I, mean, I imagine a lot of this, this a lot of this had to be a casting too. That that uh, brass had to be yeah. cast and then machined out. My mm -hmm. goodness. Just amazing what all went into that. It's a major undertaking. Yeah. And sights were offset over here on the left hand side at elevation. Rear right. sight, front sight. Right front here. sight, off the side. And if you look here, there's your alternating mechanism. I don't know how well you can see it, but that is activated by the cams also, and that selects left and right, left and right, so you can alternately load those barrels. Kind of a timing mechanism. Yeah. Well thought out design, very slick. You could pump a lot of ammo through this thing in a hurry if you had to. Fully functional tripod. And very necessary because of the weight. Yeah. Yeah, this, this isn't really man portable. This no, is not at all. Not at all. Yeah. And I imagine you'd have one guy cranking, one guy loading. Mm -hmm. And it would take a lot of loading to keep this thing fed. So when was this firearm actually in service? Well, 1898? Late 1890s for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, I've, and if I remember correctly, this was the last, one of the last 11 ordered by the U.S. military and okay. arrived just too late for the Spanish-American War. No. The treaty hadn't been signed, but the truce right. was, the fighting was over with. So and to be honest, its day was limited because the Maxim oh, yeah. gun was right on the horizon. Oh, there. yeah. So it was, gun, it was coming. The Browning potato digger right. was, was already there, but yeah. this was still pretty neat in 4570. Just a lot more expensive to reproduce to produce than the uh, oh, Lord, later yeah. machine guns. Yeah. Nice piece of equipment, fun to look at. Absolutely, and that closes it for the Gardner gun. Ugh, it takes two men and a boy to close it. Yep, definitely a very, very cool gun. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment down below. We'd be happy to hear from you. And as always, we'd like to thank Rock Island Auctions for having us out. So join us next time when we bring you another gun from the vaults.